Greetings and welcome to the first of my Classic Camera Series introduction videos. Uh, my name is Daniel and I go by Filmshooter66 on Twitter and LudwigVan66 on iPrinity and Flickr. Uh, first camera I'm going to take a look at is my newly acquired Ricoh Caddy. It's a 1961 35mm half frame camera. Got this on eBay for $40 uh, a few weeks ago and it came in this nice little supple leatherette case which is fully enclosed except for a little area here for the film rewind knob. Uh, it's attached by this silver knob on the bottom which unscrews, set that aside, and that allows you to remove the case. Um, inside's a crushed velour, still soft, it's not shedding, so I'm going to try to use this case to protect the camera as often as possible. We'll go ahead and slip that off, set it aside. Like I said, 35 millimeter, half frame. Uh, if you roll, excuse me, if you load a 36 exposure roll in this camera, you're going to get at least 72 individual images, uh, possibly as many as 80 if you load in subdued light and don't advance the film any more than absolutely necessary. It uh, features a 25 millimeter Ricoh lens uh, which in full frame 35 millimeter format perspective is going to be about the same as 35 millimeter. So slightly wide angle, uh, more wide angle than most of the half frame cameras out there. So this that's one of the main features I was really excited about getting one of these. Um, to allow a more wide-angle perspective than some of the other cameras like the Pens and the Fujikas. Uh, also, this camera is unique in most of your half-frame cameras feature some kind of fully automatic exposure. This actually is fully manual. You set the aperture and shutter speed down here on the bottom. Uh, EV values listed on the top. So that allows you to set an exposure that you want to maintain, especially if you're doing like a diptych or a triptych uh, type situation where you're shooting successive frames left to right or top to bottom. It allows you to maintain a proper exposure across all the images so you have a, have a nice continuity in between the frames, uh, which gives it a lot better look, I think. Uh, so that's one of the things I'm really excited about, about using this camera, because uh, I've had some problems um, with some fully automatic cameras like the Pen, uh, which I've used quite a bit in the past. Um, this camera features a selenium cell on the front, which is still good, surprisingly 53 years on. Um, selenium cell gathers light. Um, and allows the meter, which is located on the top, to give you an EV number that it recommends for proper exposure. You set the film speed here with this dial on the back, which will rotate uh, different EV scales. Uh, once you determine what EV number is proper for exposure, you then use the EV scale, which is located on the top, uh, by adjusting the EV to the proper setting, you are changing the corresponding f-stop and shutter speed down here on the bottom. And one of the nice things about this camera is once you get the EV that you want, you can turn it's a little hard with gloves on, so you can turn both knobs at once, uh, varying your exposure. Uh, you know, if you want shallower depth of field, more depth of field, higher or lower shutter speed, but maintain the proper EV. Um, this is a viewfinder camera. It's not a rangefinder. So you have a scale focusing on the front. Uh, I think about as close as you can get is about three and a half feet uh, to infinity. So you have to kind of determine the distance you know, by experience, um, and then set the focus. So that's a little bit of a drawback with this camera, but trying to find one with actual rangefinder focusing and fully manual exposure, there's very, very few cameras out there that offer that. Uh, viewfinder is on the back. Let's see if we can get it up here to the camera and take a look at it. S features parallax correction lines, uh, for close-ups, 
try to get that in the shot there. And it's a, a vertical, the half frame format uh, in most of these cameras is vertical. So you're going to get portrait style photos if you hold the film, or if you hold the camera this way, you're going to get landscape if you hold it this way. Uh, if you're taking diptychs, triptychs, where you're trying to take successive frames on the film that you want to scan in that order, you want to follow the direction of the film. So this camera, pretty traditional winds, cassettes on the left, the take up spools on the right, it winds left to right. So you want to take your first shot to the left and then your following shots to the right. If you hold the camera landscape mode, you want to shoot from the top to the middle to the bottom. Easy to remember, follow the film and all will be good. Uh, like I said, this is the winding down here on the bottom, a little bit different on this camera. Most cameras it's either up here on the top or it's a lever. Uh, a little hard to get used to probably, but falls to hand pretty well. Um, and as you can hear, this is a great street shooter because the shutter is nice and quiet. Um, I added this little soft release button on the top because the, the shutter button that's on here, it, it works just fine, but it's kind of tiny. And I like the feel of these soft release buttons. This is a little Hong Kong button I got for like 50 cents on eBay. And Got a whole bag of them for a couple bucks. <laughs> kind of nice. Um, one of the things about this camera that I did not notice when I bought it, didn't notice it until I got it out of the box, the flash shoe is missing. Um, not really a concern for me. I doubt that I will ever want to use it with flash. I don't use flash that often except on like point and shoot type cameras for parties, that sort of thing. So not too worried about it. And I kind of like the streamlined look of the top without the shoe. Uh, one of the nice features about this camera is the film rewinding knob is recessed into the top panel. Gives it a nice smooth look. Uh, to pop that up you want to push down on it slightly, give it about a quarter turn and it comes up. This is what you would use to rewind your film at the end of the roll after pushing the rewind button on the bottom of the camera of course. Um, and it goes back down with just a simple little push down and a twist. To open the back of the camera, you want to grab that little knob down here on the bottom, or this little lever down here on the bottom, pull it down, back springs open. You can see how this thing pops up and down to release the cassette. So your cassette goes here, you got your, your film guides uh, vertically arrayed, shutter mask area here. You can see how that half frame is much smaller than a full frame. Uh, advancing sprocket mechanism, take up spool, slotted. And one of the things about this camera, when I bought it, someone had replaced the seals with yarn. Um, yarn works, but it's kind of sloppy looking and it probably doesn't seal as well as it could. So I spent about four hours last night removing all of the sloppy glue and yarn from this back and replaced it with a thin uh, self-adhesive strip of felt which I got from my local craft store and I don't know if you can see in the back there but that's a lot cleaner uh, it seals tighter it looks better and probably seals out the light better as well which I will find out if I ever run a roll of film actually through it but uh, as you can see, this uh, real clean example of this camera, um, it was pretty clean when I got it. I spent a little time cleaning it up. Um, back closes nice and solid. And uh, this is a camera that I'm really excited about using. I enjoy telling stories with the diptychs and triptychs. Um, you know, successive frames, either like a, almost a stitched panorama type look or a series of like one, two, three photos, you know, showing a close up or a detail or, or an overall image, um, or even juxtaposed, excuse me, juxtaposed uh, images showing like differences 
in a in a certain object or scene. It, it's it's a fun little camera to play with, and uh, I'm excited about using it. And probably uh, run a roll of black and white, or maybe some uh, cross process slide film this weekend. And uh, solid little camera, a little bit heavy, uh, but it feels really nice in the hand. And uh, I really like the wrist strap with these smaller cameras. And uh, anyway, that's about it for this camera. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be offering a few more of these type of videos soon with some other older cameras that I have. And uh, hopefully you learned something from this. And uh, if you're interested in one of these cameras, they do appear on eBay occasionally. Um, I waited several months to find this one. So they are out there. And uh, if you're interested in one, good luck. Happy hunting. And uh, keep in touch. Um, I will be uploading a few more videos similar to this in the future, but uh, for tonight, that's it, and uh, have fun, keep shooting film. Good night.